time. All right, let's take a look at language. Again, we're going to look at uh, uh, pronunciation, particularly stress and phonetics, a little bit about grammar, and then vocabulary, or then vocal speed, vocal uh, volume, clarity, and accent. So let's begin with pronunciation. I want to begin with stress. Uh, in Chinese, if you do not use your tones correctly, it's very confusing. My wife recently, my wife and I recently went on a dinner date with one of our very close Taiwanese friends. When my wife, uh, when we got in the car with this other couple, my wife liked the perfume that the, the other couple's wife was wearing. And she wanted to say, oh, you smell so good. But instead she said, oh, you faint so good. And of course it was uh, a mispronunciation of tone. In English, stress is so important. And a number of common words, uh, I heard a number of just normal everyday words that were mispronounced that caused me confusion. For instance, if I tell you that I am from America, you might not know really where I'm from. But if I said I'm from America, then you would say, oh yeah, I understand. So where you put the stress in that word makes a difference in whether a person will understand what you're saying. One of the words, and I, there were many, many uh, stress mispronounced words, and I'm just going to talk about a few. One of the words that I had to listen to the video two or three times to understand was unable. In the presentation, it was unable. Now, unable is just not, simply not a word. And uh, it's a common word, unable is a common word, but if you put the stress in the wrong place and then use a, a, a neutral A rather than a long A, it becomes so confusing to the listener. Scientific terms. I'm going to show you a little clip where three words were mispronounced. Fortunately, the words were on the PowerPoint, so I was able to know what the speaker was saying. Rather than saying oncologist, I heard oncologist. Oncologist. It's almost like uncle something. Uh, rather than renaissance with the stress on the first syllable, I heard renonsense. And rather than autopsy, I heard autopsy. And this is really quite, this would be quite confusing if the words were not written on the PowerPoint. Now I'm going to show this particular example uh, in part because I think this student has very clear pronunciation. He really has a very good command of English. But when he just mispronounced some medical terms. So here we see three words where the stress is simply not placed on the right, on the right syllable. Errors in phonics. Let's talk a little bit about some of the most common sounds that are difficult for uh, Taiwanese speakers. The letter A is, uh, I have found to be particularly difficult. Uh, if I want to say pain, or if someone wants to say pain, oftentimes I hear pen, pin, pan. Uh, and there's a big difference. 
in meanings. Um, I one time went to a clinic and one of the assistants in the clinic asked me if I wanted to have a snake. And I told them that I really didn't have much need for a snake, but that I appreciated the offer. And I was with one of my graduate students and they said, oh, Dr. Ebinger, they meant snack, not snake. And there's a huge difference. But just a little difference in sound can change the meaning so significantly. In the presentations, uh, I heard staten rather than staten. I heard hoflich limits rather than Hayflick limits. Now, um, because the words were on the PowerPoint, I was able to recognize what the speaker was trying to say. But if it was a normal kind of conversation and you said Hoflick limit, I would have a hard time knowing what you were talking about. Brain versus bran. In America, bran is something that we eat. We have bran flakes. And oftentimes I would hear, um, uh, what is in the bran? When the speaker meant to say, what is in the brain? Second letter is the letter I. Oftentimes uh, I hear uh, Taiwanese speakers see the letter I and they think along E. For instance, rather than saying if, the way we would pronounce that in America, I hear if, if you do this. Or I will hear the word, in America we would say little, I hear the word little, little. Now, those are easy words to figure out, but if you have the word, if the English word you want to say is fiber, and you say fever, the, the speaker or the listener doesn't know if you're saying fever, or maybe it's a brand new word that they haven't ever heard before, fever. And I, I just want to show this little clip where this mistake happens. the speaker is talking about neural fiber rather than neural fiber, okay? Consonant that is very difficult, it's not a natural sound in Mandarin, is the L sound. And in our last little uh, video clip, the speaker says, what is a tango? Rather than saying, what is a tangle? Um, now, that, those two words may sound very similar, but a tangle is a, a, um, an interwoven uh, mess, and a tango is a dance. So that L sound is very important. Uh, oftentimes I hear the word ulcer pronounced O sir, O sir, rather than all sir. The TH sound, again, is not a natural sound for Taiwanese speakers, for Mandarin speakers. And oftentimes I hear the pronounced da or la. This becomes dis, dat, lat. Now, in a, in a medical presentation, the listener can become confused. Uh, I heard demyelin. And when I heard demyelin, I thought to myself, is the speaker wanting to say demyelination? Or is the speaker wanting to say the myelin? So again, the TH sound is very critical. And uh, practicing pronouncing the TH sound correctly would really be beneficial. Then there were a number of combined stress and phonetic errors especially with the medical terms. Uh, for instance, acetaldehyde. Um, stress, if the stress goes on the wrong place, if you have one or two vowel mispronunciations, it becomes a word that is just simply unrecognizable. 
uh, I heard the word cirrhosis pronounced in a way that if I had not seen it on the blackboard, I never would have been able to understand what the word was, cirrhosis, something like that. It was very, very difficult to understand. So, what I really am encouraging you all to do is to consult with one of the online dictionaries that provides pronunciation guidelines. Merriman's and the Cambridge dictionaries all have audible pronunciations of these words. So that when you come and do a presentation with medical terminology or scientific terminology, that you're able to incorporate correct vowel sounds, correct consonant sounds, as well as placing the stress in the right place. Language, grammar. Uh, there were many, many, many uh, instances of grammatical errors, but I just wanted to point out a couple. When you are doing a PowerPoint and you go ahead and put on the PowerPoint, especially as your conclusion, something that is grammatically incorrect, it really causes the speaker to wonder um, what is happening. Let me just start this again here. Okay, this is what I want to show. Here is one of the, the main slides in this PowerPoint presentation. Now let's just read the first sentence. In addition to the fact that staying mentally active is emotionally rewarding, comma, studies. Now that is not a complete sentence. It's simply a fragment. Now perhaps they meant in addition to the fact that staying mentally active is emotionally rewarding, never stop learning, even if you feel like you're past your prime. Maybe that was the intent. But from, the, from a first language listener's perspective, they see a comma, studies, and a period. And then the next sentence, never stop, begins with a capital letter. So this is, this is, um, is easy to correct. First, first language, Listeners are not going to be very critical if you are attempting to speak spontaneously or extemporaneously. But when you put a slide up and it has a lot of grammatical errors, in the mind of the listener, they're thinking, I wonder what other errors were embedded in the presentation. Now, one other, one other slide that I thought was... Uh, Okay, here's the conclusion, right? The conclusion to this talk. Be sympathetic and doubt every yesterday wisdom if it doesn't match the fact. Now, had the speaker say, be sympathetic and question yesterday's wisdom if it doesn't match the fact, would have been, would have made sense. But here's the concluding slide, and we have, and doubt every yesterday wisdom. Okay, it is, the grammar is just, is um, distracting.